Question 9. Getting closer to the end of the first paper here. Okay, so this is some more differentiation and how graphs of the and their and their uh, derivatives work together. Okay, so let's just write down what we get given. So we get given initially that f of x equals 3x cubed. And then 9.1, we are asked to solve for f of x equals the derivative of x. So f of x equals f prime of x. Okay, f of x we know that's 3x cubed. f prime of x, so we have to differentiate that. And the derivative is 3 times 3 gives us 9 x and then 3 minus 1 is 2. Alright, we have to solve for x in this case. So I'm going to say 3x cubed minus 9x squared equals 0. Factor out a 3x squared and we're left with x minus 3. So that gives us uh, either 3x squared equals 0 or x minus 3 equals 0. We divide by 3, so x squared equals 0, and take the square root of that, so x equals 0. There's our one answer, or x equals 3 if we take the 3 over. Good, so x is 0, or x is 3. Now, 9.2. So 9.2, 9.2, uh, we have the graphs of f, f prime, and f double prime. So I think I'm going to draw just a basic sketch of all of them quickly. So f, that is 3x cubed. So 3x cubed looks something like that. Okay, so this is f. Then we have f prime, which is 9x squared, the first derivative. So that is a parabola, right? That looks something like that. And that is f prime. And then we have f double prime. So f double prime, that's if we differentiate this part again. So if we differentiate 9x squared, we get 2 times 9 is 18x, and then 2 minus 1 is 1. So that is f double prime. 18x, that is just a straight line going quite steep, and going through the point 0, 0, if I draw it properly. So this is f double prime. Okay, 9.2.1, uh, they ask us... 9.2.1 uh, for which of the graphs will 0 0 be a stationary point okay so we get different types of stationary points right so the stationary point is we get either a minimum or a maximum or a point of inflection but the definition of a stationary point is if we can say the derivative of our function uh, when that equals 0 that is where our stationary point is so we let's do this algebraically let's do this algebraically so let's do f first. So f of x equals 3x cubed. Then that means we want to set its derivative equal to 0. So differentiate this and we get 9x squared equals 0, which gives us x squared equals 0, which gives us x equals 0. And then, so that's where we have our stationary point. And then to find the y value of it, we substitute back in. So f of 0 equals 3 times 0 cubed, which gives us 0. So we have a point 0, 0. 0, 0, that's our stationary point. Okay, so yes, f works. Then we can look at this one. So if we start with f prime, that is 9x squared. And now we want to set this derivative of this thing equal to 0. So the derivative of f prime equals 0. So differentiate that and we get 18x equals 0, divide by 18, and then we get x equals 0. So that's one part. Now we substitute that back in, back in there. So f prime of 0 equals 9 times 0 squared, and that gives us 0. So again, we have a point 0, 0. Yes, that is our inflection point. I mean, a turning a stationary point. And then finally, we can try it for f double prime. So f double prime of x equals 18x. And then we want to set the derivative of that thing equal to 0. So that means we have to set, uh, uh, sorry, differentiate this thing. If we differentiate that, we get 18. We want to set that equal to 0. Not possible. That doesn't work. So only these two. So that is our answer. 
our answer we would write as if and f prime that is what we're looking for all right uh, then I'm gonna do 9.2.2 in the same color because it's still the same idea 9.2.2 uh, we get asked explain the difference if any in the stationary points referred to in question 9.2.1 so we say there are three types of stationary points minimum maximum and inflection point so if this has an inflection point so if has an inflection point inflection point and f prime the parabola that is a turning point right turning point so it has a turning point and that's the difference one is an inflection point one is a turning point great let's get to 9.3 determine the vertical distance between the graphs of the first and second derivative at x equals 1 okay let's get another color so the difference or f of x minus f or f prime of I think it's f prime minus f double prime uh, f prime minus f double prime yes okay so the first derivative minus the second derivative at x equals 1 okay so the first derivative this is 9x squared 9x squared minus the second derivative is uh, 18x 18x at x equals 1 so we can substitute 1 so 9 times 1 squared minus 18 times 1 which gives us 9 minus 18 which gives us negative 9 and remember to put all the equal signs okay but what was the question the question was determine the vertical distance between these two so the vertical distance is when we say we said it's when we subtract them but the the negative in this case doesn't play a role because the negative just tells us which thing is below which thing so negative 9 means this one is below that one but the actual distance between them is 9 we cannot have a negative distance that just tells us direction so make sure you write your answer as 9 okay final question 9.4 for which value or values of x is f of x minus f prime of x less than zero okay I'm gonna write down that question again and then we'll discuss how we solve that so f of x minus f prime of x less than zero okay so first I'm going to talk about what this means and then we'll just do the algebra because we don't really need to know exactly what it means but it is nice it is nice okay uh, if we had a graph if we had a graph there f of x minus f prime of x so we said if we minus these two things just like we saw in the previous question that asks what is the vertical distance between them so where is the vertical distance less than zero that would mean where is this one above that one right where is this graph above that graph so f of x we say looks something like that and f prime of x is something like that and I don't know if that's that's accurate probably not uh, I'm gonna it's probably more accurate if it's oh man no nah, I'm gonna give up with with trying to draw these graphs let's just do the algebra but it's it's the algebra would even be easier if we first took this over to the other side so f of x less less than if this goes over it becomes positive right so where is the gradient greater than the function so where is the where is where is something where is it steeper than it is high in essence so where is this thing steeper than where it is high okay so we can see it looks like it's going to be everywhere left of zero that's what I'm guessing and maybe some place on the right as well but what we can do is let's just plug in the values so f of x is 3x cubed less than and this one we can say is 9x squared but again we we'll probably want to take it over so this didn't really help us 3x cubed minus 9x squared less than zero again we can factor out this is what we already did 
we already did this in the first question right so we can say that gives us 3x squared times x minus 3 uh, 3x squared as a common factor x minus 3 less than 0 we found our critical values our critical values now critical values that is either x equals 0 or x equals 3 but then we have to look at what is this this is this is a a cubic function so these are critical values which means it's our x intercepts so at 0 and 3 at 0 and 3 so it goes through 0 and ah sorry sorry goes through 0 like that just touches and then goes through 3 okay how do we know that it's because this if we if we solve this one if we solve this one a little bit more accurately or more steps 3x squared equals 0 so that gives us x squared equals 0 so that means two of the x values is 0 which so that x squared is x times x right which means that either either x equals 0 or x equals 0 so we see it crosses 0 twice that means it just touches so it touches it going up and going down. That's a little bit philosophical, but that we have a touching point, a turning point there. Exactly. Okay. Now, let's keep solving. So we know we, we want to find out where is this graph less than zero. So it's less than zero all the way to the left. Everything there is less than zero. It's also less than zero between these two values, between zero and three. So between 0 and 3, but not at 0. At 0, it's equal to 0. So we have we have x less than 0 or x is between 0 and 3. x is between 0 and 3. So that is where this is true. And that is it for question 9. Again, like always, any questions or suggestions or just different methods that you used, let me know in the comments.